So let's start this conversation off with a rhetorical question. By a show of hands, who watches sports? Great. So I was watching this basketball game with my mom, and we were very excited to watch these two high-powered teams play against each other. Team A, Team B were very, very closely you know, competitive, and at the same time, these teams were going for a playoff spot, either number one or number two. As soon as the game begins, Team A jumps off to a great start. And Team A is basically playing offense efficiently. They're playing defense, they're communicating, they're minimizing their mistakes. So my mom goes and say, Team A is good. Team A is very, very good. But as the game continues to progress, things have changed. Team B responded with a run of their own. And Team B found themselves to be leading by a great margin. Now my mom goes and say, Team A sucks. <laughs> Team A is bad. Eli, why did you lie to me? Why did you tell me that both teams are good? I go and say to mom, mom, both teams are good, but we have to continue watching the game. So we're going to be watching this game, and in the second half of this game, Team A is rallying back, trying to make a comeback. And within the last two minutes of the game, the referee calls a bogus call that is basically detrimental to Team A's success. And ultimately, Team A has lost the game. My mom, at the end of the day, my, at the end of the game, my mom goes to say, Team A sucks. Team B is way more superior than Team A. I go and tell my mom, there are so many reasons why Team A have lost that game. Perhaps Team A did not rebound correctly, or Team, team B were way more efficient offensively. Now, throughout this game, we were paying attention to the play-by-play -play action, and we were focusing on the game itself, but we were psychologically wired to pay attention to the scoreboard. Now, that scoreboard contains two critical information, the time, and the score itself. Now, that scoreboard have extreme limitations throughout the story of the game. And I told my mom, the scoreboard does not relate to the actual story of the game. A lot happened in that game, but it's diluted into a simple scoreboard. So my mom, and go, my mom goes and say, well, how come there is no form of, you know, formula that tells us what's the entire story of the game? I said, Mom, you know I'm an economics professor, right? She goes and says, yes. I said, what I'm going to do in the next coming weeks, I will create a mathematical model that tells us the whole entire story of the game. Now, in this model, we must come up with one major assumption. Throughout this game, both teams are obviously playing offense or defense simultaneously throughout the game. With that being said, both teams are susceptible to error or a mistake, possibly a turnover, personal foul, missed field goals. These are different components that play a role in the team's error. And as we cultivate this assumption, we come up with a mathematical model. Now in this model, at face value, you may think it is very, very complex and complicated but it's fairly simple. This model basically tells us that both teams are assigned a success ratio that combines the statistical components of offense and defense. And we're measuring that statistical component against the error, the turnovers, the personal fouls, the missed shots, the missed free throws. All of these components play a key role in a team's success. Now, I came up with an example that basically uses this success ratio in action. And I would like to implement and introduce this example here. Last month, the Syracuse men's basketball program was invited into the NCAA tournament. As a number 11th ranked team in the Midwest region, many analysts and coaches counted Syracuse men's basketball out. 
And as one of the last teams invited in this NCAA tournament, the Syracuse men's basketball team has to play in the first four. They went on beyond all odds and they defeated Arizona State in the first four. They went on to defeat TCU as well. Now, at this moment, many sports analysts and many quote unquote experts said that the Syracuse men's basketball team will lose against Michigan State in the round of 32. Now, we all know how that outcome went. I'm pretty sure we moved on from that round. And we played Duke in the Sweet 16. So now here comes this number two team in the Midwest region. We're playing against one of the best teams in the, in, in the nation. And we're in the Sweet 16 as one of the first four tournament teams in, right? And in this game, I would like to simulate the success ratio and correlate the success ratio to the scoreboard. Now at the start of this game, the score is 0-0. Nothing has happened yet. No team has made an impact, offensively or defensively. But as the game goes on, within the first two minutes, we notice that Syracuse is off to a great start. Despite being up by one, Syracuse's success ratio is very, very high compared to Duke. Now, as the game continues to go on, we notice that Duke is losing the game by one point, yet Duke is more successful than Syracuse. This is a compelling find here where I have a success ratio that tells something different from the scoreboard itself, right? Now, as we continue this game, we notice that Duke took control of the lead. In addition to that, they are far more successful than Syracuse. In addition, I have highlighted the mistakes that Syracuse are making, most notably the personal fouls and the turnovers. It's very, very important within our story. Now, as the game continues, we notice that Duke is maintaining their success and they are cruising on to the finish line. And by the end of the game, we notice that Syracuse have lost the game by four points and they were unsuccessful. So with the use of the success ratio, I have basically cultivated a model that can simulate the game without the use of a scoreboard. Now, I've only used one example, but in my studies, I've used 5,200 games between four professional sports leagues, the NBA, the NFL, the MLB, and the NHL, with the components of success to the scoreboard ratio. And what I find is 94% of the games that were played contain a successful winner. Conversely, 306 games contain an unsuccessful winner in the sense that the winner was not successful in this game. This is very, very important. Now, I also utilize this success ratio to tell us how it can be practical to other areas of sports. I've only applied only one example, which is a basketball example. I've mentioned four professional sports leagues, right? We have baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. But this success ratio can be applied in volleyball, tennis. We can apply this success ratio in economics and finance. We can even apply the success ratio in TEDx talks. And how do we apply the success ratio in a TEDx event? We look at the number of views to determine the success of a video and how viral it goes, right? In terms of understanding the amount of shares and the amount of looks that a video goes. And in terms of applying the success ratio, we can utilize the content, the education, the entertainment, the design, the technology. We can apply a bunch of statistical components, even the outfit we can apply within our success ratio. And we can use this success ratio to determine 
whether or not a TEDx video is indeed successful without any views. Now, I noticed that the economics and the finance portion of this success ratio can be applied in many areas in game theory. And I know that many financial analysts will be very, very interested in utilizing the success ratio, but I'll hold off on this profound information for the future, and I'll end this conversation off with a quote from a legendary coach named John Wooden. In TED 2001, John Wooden once said that you can lose a game when you outscore somebody, and you can win when you outscore it. This success ratio redefined John Wooden's definition between winning and succeeding by proving that there is a difference in the success of a team compared to the actual scoreboard of the team. Now with that being said, when you are watching a sporting event and you're rooting for your favorite team to win the game, I'd like for you to ask yourself this question. Is your team actually successful? Thank you.